To sum up, here's the list of what we've learned so far that makes internet porn a unique threat to our brains. It's all about dopamine and how they cause dopamine to be elevated for abnormally long periods of time, which, of course, overstimulates the reward circuit. Number one, one we talked about in each episode, internet porn affords extreme novelty. So you can just keep clicking, 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 looking at 300 women in a session, squirting an extraordinary amount of dopamine into your brain. This is what separates internet porn from ancient porn. Here's number two. Unlike eating or using addictive drugs, there's absolutely no limit to the consumption of internet porn. Unless you fall asleep, I guess. This is a really big factor, because when you look at drugs or food, your brain says stop at a certain point, and then your dopamine drops. With internet porn, you can keep your dopamine level elevated for hours on end by watching or edging. That's what really makes it very addictive. Even if you climaxed, for example, you can often override your normal satiation mechanisms by finding some other porn star that's even more stimulating to get you going and give you another boost of dopamine. This brings us to number three. You know, with food and addictive drugs, you can only escalate by consuming more over time. But with internet porn, escalation can switch from more actors to shocking new genres of porn, new flavors of sexual practices that have no limits. And all this tends to gush your dopamine. Number four is even more special. Unlike food or addictive drugs that need efforts to obtain, internet porn is always there in your brain, waiting for you to replay it. I imagine a lot of you have experienced this. Now, it can come in the form of flashbacks that are wanted or unwanted, but they do come back. And when they come back, they cause a rise in dopamine, a little squirt, which further strengthens your addiction pathways. So what do you do now if you have a porn addiction? Well, that's a really big question. First of all, recovering from any addiction is complex and involves changes on many levels. Now, this video is focusing on brain mechanics, and that's where I'm going to stay. So if you have porn addiction, it means you have numbed out your pleasure response and rewired your brain. How to revert those changes? Well, you take a time out. I know that may not sound easy, but that's what you want to do. We call this rebalancing the brain, and it's absolutely necessary. It has two parts. The first part is rebooting, and that's the idea of restoring the sensitivity of your reward circuitry. That means allowing your dopamine receptors to return to previous levels. And number two is rewiring, which is basically to unlearn and relearn. It involves your brain's neuroplasticity ability to weaken your addiction pathways, and of course, strengthen your rational logical pathways. So the best way to reboot and rewire is actually to give your brain a rest from intense sexual stimulation such as porn, masturbation, orgasm, and sexual fantasy, and wait until it returns to normal responsiveness. Yeah. I know it may sound like suicide for some of you to stop masturbating, but for most porn users, masturbation is tightly linked to porn fantasy, either during or after, and that can really trigger you into using again because it activates those addiction pathways. Here's that picture again. The left synapse has very few receptors, and the right synapse has more. So you're trying to move from this synapse, which is where you probably are now, if you're addicted, to this synapse and restore sensitivity. You're trying to increase the number of dopamine receptors. Just remember that overstimulation causes the nerve cells to protect themselves by reducing the dopamine receptors, which leads to numbness. And if you remember, Numbed brains are desperate for stimulation. And of course, that is the root of cravings. So as time passes without porn, you'll sprout more and more receptors and the cravings will weaken. I'm not sure how long this takes because it's definitely not a linear process. There are ups and downs. As time goes on, you'll experience more and more pleasure from everyday activities. That's what the former porn users report. Basically, what you're doing is healing your brain, similar to when you sprained an ankle. It's best to stay off that ankle and allow it to heal. If you test that ankle, you're likely to increase your healing time. So this is the second thing you want to do. You want to rewire the brain, which means to unlearn and relearn. At first, in an addicted state, you have a really strong go for it pathway and an unusually weak impulse control or think about it pathway. And in this state, it's really easy to follow the path of least resistance, which is the yellow arrow. And why is that? Because that arrow leads directly to your reward circuits, and your reward circuit is screaming, D 
do it. Here's how you want your brain to look. You want to make the blue and yellow pathway even, so you can hear from the rational part of your brain and not just your impulses. Here's another clever saying. When neurons fire apart, wires depart. That's the unlearning aspect. So when you stop using porn, the porn pathways start to weaken. That was the yellow pathway. And since you're using your impulse control, those think about it pathways will get stronger. So this process, of course, can be difficult at first. There's no denying that. Because the brain can no longer rely upon the artificially intense fix of dopamine that porn provides. However, as time goes on, this becomes easier because your reward circuit comes back into balance. And actually, you sort of let the grass grow on your porn and porn fantasy circuits, which is really good. Now, as I said before, these pathways may weaken. The addiction pathways might weaken, but they probably will never completely disappear. So it's a good idea to be aware of your cues and your triggers so you can avoid falling back into using those same pathways. We made an extra episode previously on how to increase your chances of staying off porn and thus improving the outcome of the rebalancing process somewhere in the channel. Hopefully, all the things that you've learned aids your journey to be free of the shackle that is porn, or even helps you aid your friends on their own.